But we start with rugby because right now we have got the soup. Our series back after 10 years. You know, everyone's been waiting. It's something that was there for about 12 years. And the super series where you bring together the best players from various clubs and you create franchises for them. So this year we've got four, the Lions, the Rhinos, the Cheetahs, and the Buffaloes, and they had their first matches over the weekend at the RFUA grounds. It was a full muddy affair. You know, we watched the Lions versus Rhinos game on our sister station, one two five four. And next stop will be Nakuru. To talk about that, he's a tournament director, and he's also been a long-time coach. He's actually coached sides in the front uh, when the Super Series was there. Paul Odera, welcome. Ome, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, let's see. Having this Super Series back for you, this time you've got a different role, but what does it bring back from the years when you, know, you were handling franchises back? Well, first of all, let me make a correction. The mm -hmm. tournament director is absolutely yes, Juma. Yes, I'm, I'm the high performance uh, coordinator. Coach. So uh, I think the question you've asked mm -hmm. about how it was when I was mm -hmm. coaching the franchises, I played in the first ever Super Series in 2003. Uh, that be betrays my age almost <laughs> immediately. <laughs> but uh, um, then I went in and then coached into it. It's, it's a fantastic event because it gives uh, the 15s program a platform that's just below Test Match Rugby, which is the same as the national team, but also above uh, club rugby. Because when you're bringing together 100 of the top rugby players in mm -hmm. Kenya to play in a competitive event for a month, it then gives a good platform for them to stay sharp. It also gives a good platform for the selectors of the Simbas to also see which players they'd like to use. Well, what would you say was, has been, uh, when the Super Series was there 10 years ago, we know there was a run-up to the 2015 World Cup. How did you see some, you know, the Simba setup develop? Because the Super Series at, at that point was quite competitive. I think the Rhinos were the most successful there. Yes, the, the Super Series had grown. Do you remember it went from four teams... Yes. 100 players, then I think to six teams, where we then had franchise teams from uh, outside Nairobi. Then we got teams from Tanzania. I think we then had two franchise teams from Uganda. Uganda. So by the time uh, the Super Series uh, was being played uh, about 10 years ago, it had developed into a regional franchise event, which is excellent. Because remember, if our neighbors are strong, we are also mm -hmm. as strong. When your neighbors are not very strong, then it doesn't really work for you. So at that time, it was brilliant because then it had uh, developed into East Africa. We're looking to get Zimbabwe in to bring in franchise teams. So sadly, when it stopped at that time, I think we've now had to go backwards and regroup to say uh, and, uh, and see how we can then build it up again. So that's why this, this year, it's only four teams. Uh, but the best thing about this year is the clubs have taken ownership of the franchises. Uh, because before it used to be, that's a KRU event, and, and, and then there are club events. But this year, the, the, the franchises have taken ownership of it. Uh, the chairman of the clubs are fully engaged, and with their support is how this Super Series has, has actually taken off. Well, let's also um, uh, you know, talk about you know, how, uh, the composition of the franchises, because I can mention, Lions, KCB, Jaquat, Black Blood, USIU, and uh, the South Coast Pirates. The Buffaloes, you've got Cabras, Kisumu, uh, Monks, uh, Masinde Muliro, and Western Bulls, Cheetahs, uh, the basically Oilers, Nakuru, Kabarak, University of Eldoret. And then you've got uh, Rhinos, which is, uh, would call, you've got Strathmore, Desta, Mean Machine, uh, and Mombasa. The thinking behind these combinations. That's a good question. <laughs> the thinking, well, first, we, we then had to look at the Kenya Cup uh, standings from last year, not this year. So mm -hmm. the top four mm -hmm. Kenya Cup teams uh, immediately formed the core teams of, of each franchise. So you'll see uh, Cabras forming the core mm -hmm. of one franchise, KCB, uh, and then you have Queens and I think it was Strathmore. In Strathmore, yes. Yes. So now those, those were the core from last year. So into next year, of course, the, it'll be different. So after that, then we looked at geographical um, considerations. Then we also had to look at, right, you know, which teams do you put with which team because you can put KU to, to play with the team in, in Western Kenya. Yes. 
Um, and then after that was done, uh, then is, is when we, we, we got into what makes up which franchise teams. Uh, it's not been easy. Behind the scenes, I'll tell you, there's been, there's been a lot of push and pull because it's something that has been lost for 10 years. Um, but it's working in a way because the teams are then able to um, uh, learn um, how to cooperate and how to manage. Uh, then even the coaching staff, there had to be some agreement on which mm -hmm. coach comes from <laughs> which club. Um, and then you will see that there are some dominant clubs. Um, that's the reality. I think Cabra Salon have 19 Simbas players. Yes. <laughs> you see. That's the situation at uh, the moment. That's the reality on the ground. But with high-performance rugby, sometimes those are the sad realities. When I played in the first Super Series, uh, I was at Queen's, and Queen's was the dominant club. I think we had Nakuru with us as well. They're traveling from a long way. I think, and USIU also in, in our franchise. Um, you had 13 Queen's players starting and maybe two or three from other clubs. Um, so sometimes it's not always balanced. But what you'll find is, as if we do this consistently every year, you're going to find the standards and levels of other clubs coming up and they'll get better players. So at some point you'll be able to, to get uh, at least equitable mm -hmm. representation uh, fr from all the clubs. Well, I know the conversation about equitable representation um, <laughs> has been there. But the reality, if... I mean, uh, the 2022, 20, 2023 Kenya Cup standings determined that. But the 2023, 2024 Kenya Cup is a story by itself. Yes. You are either up there or down. <laughs> As you said, yes, you did. Uh, and just taking a look at what we saw over the weekend, uh, what we watched over the weekend, how, what's the impact now um, when it comes to team selections where you find that, for example, we find a franchise saying, hey, how come we only have one player but... Um, or for ex or I'll use an example of the uh, the Lions where KCB are dominating. Yes. It's not an easy conversation to have uh, because everybody wants to be represented. However, uh, what you've got to look at is this tournament is meant to be a platform to select the Kenya yes. Seabirds. So as much as we want to have equity, uh, we've also got to take into cognizance the fact that the national coach and the national team setup also want to see uh, players playing who they want to consider for the national team. So it's a very difficult balance to strike uh, between uh, having equity in selection, but also making sure that the best rugby players in Kenya are on the field at that time. So homie, that, there, there's no easy answer to that. In fact, as we speak, there's still a lot of conversation going on. Um, there's also the under-20s, mm -hmm. don't forget. Yes. Chipu, who won uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, some of those players as well remember preparing to go to Scotland in July. Uh, you know, the coaches also want to see, can these boys play at a higher level, keep them sharp, uh, keep them playing rugby. That's going to be a lot harder than what they'll experience in Scotland. So that's also another consideration. So you can imagine, let's go back to Cabras. They have 29 Simbas and, and, Chipu, and Chipu players. So then what happens to players from Kisumu well, <laughs> who, who, who want to say, look, can I put my hand up? And, and get selected for the national team. So it's not an easy conversation to have, but it's one that I think we'll be able to find a workable solution. Yeah. At times, team selection is always a, it's a coach's headache, and when one team is dominating, and it stands out to be that way. Let's first of all take a look at what you saw over the weekend and some of the conversations that you'd want to have uh, with the coaches. First, Cheetahs versus Buffaloes, and you saw... Um, Everyone says this was the surprise result. Well, surprise result? Um, possibly. The cheaters will tell you it was not a surprise result, <laughs> of course. Um, Buffaloes to the extent. But if you're yeah. looking at the team on paper, it, the cheaters were favorites to win based on the selection of the players that they had. So maybe Buffaloes may have a rethink because they played a very young team, a very exciting team. I think the fullback is the Chipu fullback, uh, yeah. fullback as well, and, and he played. Um, but the focus, uh, really, as Super Series for the coaches was to try and support them with their communication. Um, uh, verbal communication pre-match, um, mm -hmm. the verbal communication um, at halftime, and the verbal communication post-match. So that's what we were supporting the coaches with, to see how they can support uh, their players to, to, get, um, to, to play better. Um, the Cheetahs played the conditions really well. But if you look at who they had at scrum half, 
uh, on Samson and Somu is um, still a very wise old head. Um, and these conditions suited him perfectly because you couldn't really uh, play an expansive, quick game. And by the time he was managing uh, the game that well, uh, they were able to get into the right places on the field and, and play. Well, talking about the, uh, the conditions, just take a look at your screen, and those are the conditions at the RFUA grounds. And you'd think that you'd be watching rugby someplace in England uh. when it's wet, <laughs> rather than the Southern Hemisphere rugby, which tends to be flowing. And one of the things that you'd like, I know you'll have conversations with, you know, the four coaches of the franchises, is adaptation to maybe these conditions like this. Exactly. And Wami, well, you've asked the right question, because we've got to learn to play in every condition. Uh, we had to take the decision before the game to have uncontested scrums uh, because it was so muddy as you can see on the screen and the problem was going to be that if we had contested scrums, you can imagine 800 kilos um, on 800 kilos with little traction on the ground. So suddenly if the scrum went down, you'd have a pressure of almost a thousand kilos going on to the front rows. Um, so the risk, uh, the injury risk was very high. So in consultation with Dr. Wimbo, the chief medical mm -hmm. officer, and the referees, and uh, the tournament director, Absolons Juma, then we said, right, uncontested scrums, and thankfully we, we came through unscathed. But we've got to learn to play in such conditions. And sometimes that has been the Achilles heel of, of the Simbas, and to a lesser extent the Sevens, but especially the Simbas. When we've got somewhere and suddenly the, the conditions are not what we're used to, um, we are not able to adapt. So it was good to see the players uh, playing in such conditions. Uh, Lions against Rhinos, 29-5 it ended. Lions um, under Oliver Mangen. What was the main thing that you picked up from this franchise? Um, one, what I picked up from the Lions uh, selection is they had a very settled build-up to this. Uh, their opponents didn't have that. Um, I think there's a time they went to train. It had rained so hard. They were training at Strathmore, but there was the river that <laughs> had overflown, so they couldn't train for an hour. Uh, they were also looking for grounds on where to train, um, and, and that has proved challenging. Uh, but Magani's team, Oliver, I think they were settled. They did the selection early and then they were able to get in sessions there. So it showed. They also played quite a number of Simba's players. Um, so you could see the experience and you could see the quality of play that they brought in. Uh, but, you know, it was match day one. So, so let, let's, see, let's see how it goes in, in Nakuru. The, if the weather is better and if the ground is better, you know, that could change the dynamics. Right, well, the advantage of Nakuri is that they've got two pitches on one ground. Let's <laughs> yeah. see how they work around them, yeah. because I know they would love the noise. The other one that they would like, you know, that everyone's having conversations about is we're building up to around June when, you know, the Simbas will have to be in action one way or another. Mm. And from the lessons learned from the previous uh, Rugby Africa Cup competition, you have to, uh, everyone's been talking about some growth in the set-piece play say line outs and the scrums what are the lessons that you know after you analyze all the data you want to hand back well this weekend was difficult because first the scrums are uncontested yes uh, line outs um, I'd say are still a challenge uh, for us even under these conditions uh, because we'll have to still learn how to throw or jump uh, if it's muddy or if it's wet uh, but set pieces I know uh, Jerome Powell and his team have really focused on because if you don't have your set piece in 15 aside rugby you can't compete it yeah and, and it becomes very difficult you saw it with Chipu uh, when they had a solid scrum uh, they were able to put Zimbabwe under pressure and because of that they built on that that as a, as a platform and that is something that I think is, is the focus for for super series as well um, looking at the set pieces the national team coaches um, are working very closely with all the franchises to bring down the pattern that mm -hmm. is being used at the Simbas down to each of the franchise teams um, and um, I think the set piece coaches there are also looking to see what what they, the, they, they can bring in terms of their technical know-how though um, the other one is also talking about you know the conditioning of the players uh, yeah. and their fitness how have you been working you know especially with those who are in the Simba setup to ensure that they're in the right condition all the time well, I know there was a, a calibration camp uh, in February. I think there was, there was one camp then, um, which was done. The good thing is we're just coming out of Kenya Cup mm -hmm. and having played two rounds of, of the Enterprise Cup. So, so the players are still fit. 
which, which, which really helps. I think there's some long-term injuries that are being monitored. Um, the conditioning, uh, the SNC people at the Simbas, I think are also looking to see how they can support uh, a lot of the franchises in, in keeping them fit. Once you've already started a competition like this, uh, really it's about maintenance and it's about maintaining um, uh, the, the levels of, of condition, the strength, the power and what, whatever gains that you've made. So making any meaningful gains, because this is a very intense tournament. It's four weeks every weekend, bang, 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 and then we are done. So the, that, that'll be difficult. But I know the SNC coaches from the Simbas are working closely with the franchise coaches to monitor and, and to make sure that uh, players who are potentially going to be in the Simbas or already part of the Simbas wider squad are kept fit. Well, development is very important. And with the return of this, there is something you mentioned right at the start. Um, the previous Super Series had heavy sponsorship. Every franchise would, have, would be tied to a sponsorship partner. So they would carry that name. But this time around, I know the Kenya Rugby Union um, pulling off this, not, major, not any um, major title sponsorship. The thing is, how have clubs taken ownership of this? Because, for example, we saw KCB take full ownership of the Lions. Yes. Cabras yes. Have, have come in as well. Mm -hmm. And Engai, uh, Oilers have come in. Mm -hmm. I think we've got to thank that group of companies, Water, through Aquamist. Mm -hmm. You know, so th there's actually a lot of sponsorship that has come in. It's not been in cash, but it's helped to really reduce a lot of costs. Transport, for example, has been covered by some of uh, the, the main clubs. Because to bring these teams from Western Kenya... From Kamega and, Kamega and Kisumu. And, and, and then from uh, Nakuru as well. You know, that's a big cost when, you tr when you're, you're considering it's a team. But these main clubs have come in. KCB have come in. Cabras have come in. Uh, Meningai have come in and said, no, not a problem. We'll cover that. Even accommodation has been covered by some of these clubs. So actually the main sponsors of which of these franchises, franchises this year are actually th those main clubs who've taken... That's why I told yeah. you, if they did not take ownership of uh, this series this year, it would have been very difficult to hold uh, because cash flows are important when you're holding a tournament mm -hmm. of such a magnitude. But the, the club chairman and the franchise chairman, to their credit, have just sat down and said, right, Super Series must happen and we are going to see how much w we can support it. Um, so th that has been good. Looking at it and uh, what sort of the vibes from, you know, the players and the, co and the coaches and what you would want to be looking at uh, next week when you travel to Nakuru and the week after when you travel to Kakamega before coming back to Nairobi. I hope the pitch by then will have regenerated. Yes, I mean, you know, you can only control what you're in, in control of. And we're not in control of the elements, but of course we're in control of making sure the condition of the pitch is up to an acceptable standard. Um, Looking forward to this coming weekend. So ev every week with the coaches, um, well, let's look at high performance mm -hmm. first because high performance, in a way, has, uh, we we'll look at different elements. There's the match officials. What we're really trying to do is to develop synergy between match officials and the coaches because always there's this finger pointing when a match has ended, mm -hmm. ref, ref did this, ref did that. What we're trying to do is to try and get a good working relationship between the match officials and the coaches. Uh, so if they're working together, then the players will, um, will uh, develop and the game is even better. The second thing we'll try and focus on with the coaches is their leadership. Uh, and in terms of uh, focusing on individual players and supporting individual players. Because sometimes as a coach, it's easy to, to just treat the team as a blanket. Yet Wahome is very different from Paul Odera. Yeah. And uh, what you might tell Paul and what you might tell Wahome will work for Paul, not work for Wahome. Uh, so maybe th those are some of the things we'll try and get the coaches maybe to begin to understand their players as individuals to try and, and, and see how they can play. Some played well last Saturday, some did not play as well. So how, how do you deal with that? So that's the work we're going to try and focus on uh, going okay. into match day two. All right. Paul Odera, he is the high performance at the Rugby Super Series. Let's take a short break from this conversation on the Super Series and move over to the Boulevard Hotel. Conversation. And this is about rug the Rugby Super Series and we're with Paul Odera, who's in charge of the high performance at the Rugby Super Series. So, Paul, let's talk um, ideally about what uh, the feeder system that we eventually, because we've seen some cheap players being called up to the franchises, um, the Kenya Rugby Union at the moment has a development plan where you've got the age grade in charge of the younger ones. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, then you've got Chipu who've yeah. qualified for Scotland. Yes. And what is it that you'd like to see, you know, with the under-17s and now the under-20? Uh, 
Um, it's a very good thing uh, to have a pathway. So what, what it's normally called is a pathway. So you want to see if Wahome is, uh, is really talented as a scrum half at the age of 10, how are we going to support him to fulfill on his potential? Whether he becomes a symbol or not is immaterial. But what path are we going to put for him so that when he's 19 or 20 or when he's in university, he can play? Um, so right now, the, the building blocks are being put in place for... Um, the Simbas. I'm, I'm mm. uh, running the under-18 program, so I went round. Uh, for, I haven't been round since 2006, I think, to watch schoolboy rugby, and I was so impressed. Uh, but just the passion and even the skill levels. And also now, because of YouTube and, and what's available and what's up, people are really in touch with what's going on mm -hmm. in the latest in terms of coaching. So we find a lot of coaches have a lot of the information. Um, so the teams are playing a very good structure. But mine is to bring the structure down from the Simbas down to the under-18s. Then you have the under-20s. Ideally, we'd need one more team between Simbas and the under-20s. Because a 19 or 20-year-old is perhaps still not the finished product. Uh, mm -hmm. You imagine uh, putting a prop who's 19 up against a 29-year-old prop who's now fused as, a, as an adult male. Okay, that, that can present it, its own challenges. So maybe an under-23. Unless, you're, unless you're a skulk bugger. <laughs> unless, <laughs> there, are some, there are some who by 12 uh, uh, look like they're 18 years old. <laughs> bugger, obese, uh, or oh, yes. the rest of them. So sometimes that's possible. So again, those are the building blocks to try and get a pathway. What ideally should really be the future of development is that clubs, schools, universities should form um, like a group. So what you'd want is that from kindergarten or the primary school, so if you take Ngong Road, for example, there's Jamuri Primary. Yes. So you'd want Jamuri Primary aligned with... Uh, Impala or Queens? Queens, Impala. Then aligned with which uh, there's uh, Makini, there's Riara, there's some schools around that area. Then there's a university r right next to it. So if the university, the club, and the schools were all together, then if they are producing players through their pathway, then it makes it easier to track players across the country through th each pathway. So for example, Kisumu. Kisumu would want Kisumu boys or Kisumu high. There's Yala, there's Maseno. Then that would feed into Kisumu RFC, which would then feed into Maseno University. And, and then that way, they can be able to build players through there. So that, that is my utopian, my utopian uh, dream. For, for no, if Cabrasia, that they'll work very closely with Kakamega High School. Chavakali, <laughs> Kakamega, <laughs> Butula. I mean, the Cabras, the, the, the feeder that they have there, then they'd have to work closely with Masinde, Muliro, really well. which they already are. So you can see the future for Cabras. They're, they're actually doing it. They have ties with Masinde Muliro, because sometimes some of those players come and play in their mm -hmm. ESS team. They have ties with Butula. The Butula fullback um, plays for the ESS team for, for Cabras. But you can see even when he finishes this year as a Form 4, then they'll be able to see, right, do you get him into Masinde Buliro and how do we support him? So they have their system, right? And you'll see that they're setting up their future really well as, as Cabra. So that would be the ideal. And you'd want at the coast, uh, Mombasa RFC, uh, the Spwani University, uh, the, mm -hmm. the Shibola Tewa, uh, you know, around that whole area. So if, you want, if those could all come in together, then, then it, would, it would help. The, um, let me talk about the under-20s. Uh, two things as yeah. we come to a close. Number one, Chipu, the impact of that win against Zimbabwe. Um, we remember what they were saying about the under-20 side. You know, I mean, somebody had said Kenya doesn't have the rugby brains, but there's some form of intelligence that they are playing with that works. So that's the first one. And number two, um, the probables for Madrid. The, I mean, the Madrid... Promotion, relegation, play. <laughs> Seven. Seven. <laughs> okay, let's start with the easier one, which, which is cheap. <laughs> which is cheap. <laughs> um, they are right, because if you look at Zimbabwe players, uh, they're very polished. But remember, Zimbabwe play carry cup under 13. They play carry cup under 16. Zimbabwe can choose for you a uh, national under 11 side, uh, based on the systems they have. So, uh, boys, it's not that they're any less talented, but because they don't have the building blocks through the pathway, right through the age grade system, uh, they may not have the finesse. However, I think credit goes to Simon Jawichre um, and also the Simbas setup. Uh, all the resources for the Simbas were brought to, to support uh, the under 20s in the preparations. So Brian Omondi was doing uh -huh. the, the defense.
Carlos was, was doing the scrummaging, um, and so a lot of that. And Jerome Powater was also working with them. So when all that was put together, I think it contributed uh, to, to a, a very good um, result. And it changes the game. Because if you look at the Chipu players who qualified in 2019 yes. to go to Brazil, they are now playing good rugby across for different clubs. The same thing with this Chipu team. When they finish that, they'll be able to play across the club. So even if they don't make the Simbas, but you'll find that the standards of rugby will be raised. Now we go to seven. Sevens. <laughs> USA, Spain, Samoa, and Canada facing relegation from confirmed, yes, from from co, uh, from uh, from the twelve core teams in the seven series: Uruguay, Kenya, Chile, and Germany. But yes. before that, there is Munich, where Kenya faced Chile, Portugal, and Japan. Yeah, I think we'll make the top four. Yeah, that's for sure because we're tied at the top. Buying a complete disaster, we should make the top four. Ideally, we want to finish number one or two, uh, because when you look at the teams who are coming down. The, the, top, the bottom four teams from the HSBC series, um, it's, it's going to be a tough one. Look, but that's the nature. If we, we always knew it was going to be tough, uh, but getting back will not be easy. But um, if we can finish one or two and then get a good placing, and then in Madrid it will be all to play for. Uh, day one, uh, I think we had a pool. You play three games, then you're seeded again. Uh, number one, Pule plays number four, four. Pool B, and then uh, number two plays number three. And then after that, it's winner takes all. Because if you win that game, once you're in the semis, you're in the HSBC okay. series. So it's possible. Uh, the, the guys are building well. And it's helped that also there's the Olympics that, that, that's coming as well, which they're building. Because once you're building for the Olympics, means you come under the umbrella of the National Olympic Council, which then helps because there are certain costs that, that, that can be supported with that. So that's a good thing. So I don't know, Wahome, it's going to be tough, but as you said earlier when we were talking <laughs> off camera, right, you know, people almost seem to have lost interest in HSBC series because our boys are not, not there. there. So if our boys can get back there, uh, I'm sure you'll see the renewed interest in it. Eh? Yes, we'll be seeing a lot of renewed interest in that, that competition. So um, on the 18th and 19th of May um, in Munich, that's where uh, Shuja will be competing. So the Impulse alongside Kenya, Chile, uh, Portugal and Japan, or the Lioness, by the way, also building up towards the Olympics. And yeah. They're in an interesting pool, Belgium, Poland, and Mexico, in Krakow. Our Lioness says, yeah, we, didn't, we did really well in the first event. We didn't do well in South America, and I think that has really put us in a difficult position because now we're leaving it uh, for other results to go away, for, for the ladies to be able to the chance to play in that, last, uh, in, in that uh, big tournament in Madrid. It's still there, um, slim chance, but you never know it's sevens. Mm -hmm. If our girls can play well, get themselves, if they can get in the semis or even into the final, uh, mm -hmm. Okay, in, uh, in 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 Poland, then we, it, they have a good chance of perhaps making that that uh, top four to get into the Madrid uh, tournament. Well, they, you've had it from Paul Odera. Oh yeah, just one last one. Yes, schools. There was a lot of interest um, in the schools' term one games. What did you pick out from you know the various coaches who were working with the schools? Um, very passionate coaches uh, at that level. Uh, they're willing to learn. Uh, which is which is excellent, but the boys are playing the game with a passion that school boys usually play. You remember schools mm -hmm. rugby? Yes. The singing is still there. Uh, the the boys still approach the game with with 100% commitment, um, and. The best thing about it is that the game is being played across Kenya. If you've seen the lists that are coming up for the under-18 teams, we've got even a northeastern list. We've got a team from Central. Rift Valley was a challenge because there's North Rift, South Rift, then we had to combine it. But the coaches were brilliant. Uh, they, they were there. They made sure that they select the players. Um, and I think the game is in a good place looking at, at that level of commitment from those coaches and the players uh, at the schoolboy level. Oh. Thank you very much. Paul Odera, he is a high-performance chief of the Rugby Super Series, and I will also tell you that um, we shall be keeping up with this, and remember, three more weekends of the Rugby Super Series that will be com uh, coming up. So, next conversation, it will be about the Sports Business Summit that will be hosted by Strathmore University's Business School on Thursday, the 9th of May, 2024. And two other stories that we are keeping tabs on, um, um, one, the AUB Media Summit, so we shall be taking a look at that. And also, later, we'll be talking about the international, uh, the ISF All Schools Cross Country Championships that Kenya will be hosting and will be live on KBC Channel 1.